Hey guys, Caleb here with DSLR Video Shooter, and welcome to part two of our ProRes series of videos. In part one, we talked about what ProRes RAW was or is, and why you should care about it. In this video, we're gonna be talking about acquisition, actually filming ProRes RAW, the things you're going to need. And then in the next video, part three, we're gonna talk about editing and grading ProRes RAW. And what's interesting with all this stuff is everything's changing or will change over time. So currently, uh, there's some limitations as to what software and hardware you can use to record ProRes RAW. I would imagine that's going to shift fairly dramatically down the road, and I'll keep you guys posted. But in this video and in the next video, don't think that there's only a very narrow amount of tools you can use to use ProRes RAW, because that's probably going to change. So when it comes to actually shooting and recording ProRes RAW, you need currently three things. And again, this is all subject to change down the road. But here in 2018, you need three things. Number one, you need a camera that is compatible. It needs to be able to shoot and output raw video. So we'll go over a list of cameras here in a second. The second thing is an external recorder with exception to one camera. Uh, you will need a recorder, except for one camera that we'll be talking about in a second. Um, and there are two recorders available to us. We'll talk about that. And finally, the third thing you're going to need is a specific type of media that can handle raw recording. So let's go ahead and start with the first thing you need, a camera. Currently, there are, I believe, eight cameras compatible with ProRes RAW. And at this point, I'm gonna grab my phone so I don't forget any specs. We're gonna start with Canon. The Canon C300 Mark II can do ProRes RAW, but you're limited to 4K DCI at up to 30 frames per second. When it comes to the C500 from Canon, same thing is going on here. 4K DCI at 30 frames per second. Uh, unfortunately, at this time, the Canon C200 cannot do ProRes RAW because it doesn't output uh, RAW over any connection at this time. Moving on to Panasonic, the EVA1 can do 4K at 24, 25, 30, 50, and 60. Uh, soon, you'll be able to go up to 5.7K at uh, 30 frames per second via an update. So stay tuned for that. And that's pretty awesome, almost 6K uh, at 30 frames per second. And you can also do 2K DCI at 240 frames per second. When it comes to the uh, Panasonic Varicam, we can do 4K DCI up to 60 frames per second and 2K from one all the way to 240 frames per second, which is pretty sweet. Uh, and the, the next camera is really interesting, and that is uh, the X7 from DJI. So it's for the Inspire 2. It's, it's the camera that can go along with that. That camera is currently, as of this video, the only camera that does internal ProRes RAW. So you do not need an external recorder. Unfortunately, that camera is a little pricey if you're going to be getting it with the drone. But again, at this time, that's the only one that uh, will let you record internal ProRes RAW, which is pretty slick. Uh, and I don't have uh, a way to access that camera or use it right now, so I really can't tell you the exact specs. But uh, I would imagine around 4K, you'd be good to go. And finally, we have Sony. With Sony, you can use the FS7, the FS5, or the FS700, which I have right here next to me. Um, pretty much the settings are the same across all the different cameras. We have 4K DCI up to 60 frames per second, and in 2K mode, we can go up to 240 frames per second. And finally, there is a 4K at 100 and 20 frames per second burst mode. So you can actually record ProRes RAW in 120 at 4K, which is insane. Now it is burst mode, so you can't just continuously be recording it, but when it comes to that high of a frame rate at 4K, um, that opens up into a pretty long little clip once you uh, you know conform it to a 24p timeline. Now again, that's the current list. I would imagine this changing in the near future. Now, a couple things to keep in mind, to have cameras use ProRes RAW, they need to acquire a license from Apple. I definitely think this will happen down the road. The question is how long it'll take. Because if you look at just normal ProRes, not ProRes RAW, but just standard ProRes, almost all the manufacturers have a license, um, or at least a lot of them do. 
Red has a license uh, so to record internal ProRes. Blackmagic has a license. So I could see the companies like that getting a license for ProRes RAW. Whether or not Apple is going to give it to them right away or hold off, I'm not sure. Uh, I don't know what that process looks like. And I also hope we'll see a bunch of internal ProRes RAW cameras come out. A lot of people are talking about the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, and it would be great if that camera could do internal uh, 4K because it has the ability to record on external SSDs, which is very important. So those are the cameras. The current lineup is eight cameras, and I'm sure that list is going to grow over time. The second thing you're going to need, except for that DJI X7, is an external recorder that can record in ProRes RAW. Currently, there are two and a half recorders that will work with this. The first and probably going to be the most popular option is the Shogun Inferno. Um, this puppy here can do pretty much all flavors of ProRes RAW, and it's going to be a champ for you. It's a 7-inch recorder monitor. I've done a review on it. You can check that out in the description or via the card. The next uh, recorder that definitely works is the Sumo, also from Atomus. That's the 19-inch uh, monster recorder, and uh, that will be able to do ProRes RAW. The half, because I said two and a half, is the brand new Ninja 5 from Atomus. Um, that one isn't quite there yet. Currently, the only way to output RAW and uh, the only standardized way to do it is through SDI. So that monitor recorder, the Ninja 5, natively does not have an SDI input. I do know for a fact that the Ninja 5 has the horsepower to handle ProRes RAW, so I'm sure we'll see some form of ProRes RAW coming at some point for that. But at this time, today, there's two recorders that'll work. The Shogun Inferno and the uh, Sumo recorder. So that is the camera and the recorder. Those are two of the three components. The third component you need to do ProRes RAW is media fast enough to handle uh, that RAW you know, data. Currently, uh, there are a decent amount of options and there are more coming out. And at first I was really concerned at how expensive it was going to get because there were only a few uh, drives that were certified, but more and more coming out and they're not gonna be that expensive. So I am using the Angelbird. Uh, I think this is the 4K RAW drive. It's specifically designed to be able to handle 4K RAW at 120 frames per second. Uh, it's a super intense, well-made uh, drive. This is a 500 gig version. It's around 500 bucks though. But for under $200, I wanna say 120-ish, you can start to get SSDs that will be able to handle uh, ProRes RAW. So I'll have links to several different options in the description. Um, they're going to work great. They're gonna work for so many of these great recorders, so it's worth investing in them, and the cost has come down so much. So check out those in the description. But you can't just use any old SSD uh, for ProRes RAW. It's gotta be able to handle RAW. So those are all the components you need to make ProRes RAW work as of today. Now we're going to go over setup real quick. So you've got your camera, in my case, the cheapest option of that entire list, which is the FS700. I've been really enjoying this old camera. Uh, it is a little dated, but it does amazing stuff. And with this recorder and ProRes RAW, it's a brand new camera, which is, I love it so much. Anyway, we got the camera. We've got an SDI coming out of the back. At this time, there's no way to do ProRes RAW, or RAW for that matter, over HDMI, at least as far as we know. Uh, so I'm having that run over to the recorder. On the back of the recorder, you're gonna wanna make sure you're connecting to the 12G input. It'll have a little 12G uh, next to it. And that's pretty much it. And with that setup, we can go ahead and power everything up. I'm gonna flip this around, turn on the camera. This is kind of an interesting form factor, but I've really been enjoying this camera. Um, and we'll go ahead and fire up the Shogun. So just like that, we're gonna give it a second. You'll hear it roar up and uh, we'll be ready to rock here. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my SSD here and install it, slide it in just like so, and we're ready to go. Um, I already have the camera set up for RAW, and in a separate video, I'll be talking about this camera and all the different RAW capabilities because there's a lot of them, and uh, this camera is just insanely good value these days when you're considering what it can do with ProRes RAW. So, the camera is set to RAW. Right now, I'm at uh, Cinema 4K or 4096 by 2160, 24 frames per second, 
And uh, next thing you're going to want to do is set up the recorder. So right now it already sees that we're using SDI and it's receiving a raw input. And up here for the codec type, we have a couple options. We have ProRes Raw as our codec. Next we have quality. Here's where we can choose our different flavors of ProRes RAW. Most of the time I'm shooting HQ, but if you need to, you know, drop those file sizes down, you can switch over to LT, which is kind of weird because technically it's called ProRes RAW, not ProRes RAW LT, but the LT here is essentially ProRes RAW, not the HQ. Uh, and with that, we can hit OK, and we're ready to record ProRes RAW. One other thing you might uh, consider doing is setting up the trigger mode where when you hit record on the camera, it'll trigger the recorder to begin recording. And you're done. You're filming in ProRes RAW. Now, a couple things to keep in mind here. Um, since we're recording RAW, it's going to capture a lot of the you know exposure information when it comes to uh, your ISO and other things like that. It's still a good idea to get close. So I wouldn't recommend setting this to the highest possible setting for your ISO. Um, what I usually do is get it to where it looks pretty decent and I've got scopes on the monitor here, um, which work great. And uh, then I go ahead and film and in post we can make all our changes, but you don't wanna, with RAW, even though it is RAW, you don't wanna just throw everything around. Still make sure that you're paying attention to your aperture, make sure your shutter angles are where you want them. Uh, and if you aren't sure on what those settings are, check out the video I did breaking all that stuff down and the relationship between the most important settings on your camera. And uh, boom, you hit record, you're good to go. You can preview them on uh, the Shogun Recorder, which is awesome. So that is ProRes RAW acquisition, how to set things up, what you need. In our next video, we're gonna jump into post-production, talk about editing ProRes RAW, um, some compatibility there, things that are really important you need to pay attention to, and uh, all that good stuff. So thank you for watching this video, and I'm uh, looking forward to seeing you guys over in part three.